Means Woodshop merch is now available. Check the link down in the description. I'm Caleb with Means Woodshop. Today we are going to experience the zen and peaceful aura of making this desktop zen garden. And it's pretty cool because it's made out of exotic wood. This is marble wood and it was my first time using it so that was an interesting experience. And these things are really cool and if you look online there's tons of variations on how to make them so let's check it out. This is marble wood and this is the wood I've chosen to use for this project and I've never used it before and actually this small board is quite heavy so it's 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 a pretty dense wood. Wood this end is covered in waxy just to help keep it from checking. Figure out how long I want the thing to be, how wide, and then we'll go from there. I know I'm going to need to trim off this edge because it's a little rough. I think 11 inches looks good. So what I'm going to do, actually, in reality, guy, is put a mark at 11 and a half. That gives me plenty of room to be able to, you know, trim stuff down. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous about using this wood. I've never used marble wood before, so I looked it up on the wood database, which I'll include a link to that website down below. It's a great informative website for studying up on all the kinds of woods that you might want to use in your woodworking. And uh, while looking up marble wood, I read that it could cause a moderate to severe blunting effects on tools because it's got really tight interlocked grain. Like I said, it's very dense. Let's just see how this goes. Beautiful. I'm going to get all four sides of this box out of these two pieces. And I want to connect them with 45 degree angles. And something I've done before that seems to have worked pretty good was to cut that 45 degree angle on my boards before I split them into two pieces so I know that those angles will all be perfect and I won't have to set up stop blocks and crap like that. I'm going with my usual method now, making multiple passes on the table saw to get a good quarter inch fit for the bottom of the box. Another little feature I'd like to add on the box is on the inside top edge, I want to put a 45 degree angle on there. So I've tilted my blade to 45 degrees and uh, we could do that. Bruh. That kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like with that 45 degree angle on the inside. Just a little decorative thing. I'm ready to glue up my box and let me give you a pro tip. Um, when you're gluing up a box like this, sides and a bottom, do go ahead and do all your sanding on the inside so 
imagine trying to get your orbit sander in there when it's all glued up together, my guy. That's all I'm saying. So again, I'm using some of that cherry veneered plywood and the what is considered the bad side is going to be the top actually uh, like I did on that dice tray because it's going to be filled with sand so should anybody want to tip it over and dump all the sand out and look at the bottom they'll get the nice side Anytime I ever glue up boxes like this, I only ever put the glue on one side. Like, I'm not putting any glue on these sides because a lot of times you might watch other woodworkers that put glue on either side of the joint. If you want to do that, do you, bruh. But in my opinion, glue is getting on both surfaces, and if you put glue on, if you apply glue on both surfaces, then all you're really getting is just excess squeeze out. If you don't want to do that, don't do that. Use as much glue as you want. it in there. I'm really glad I didn't cut the rake head to shape yet so I could have something to hold on to. to kind of go in at an angle so uh, here goes nothing if I mess it up I could just always make another one I hope y'all are ready for something super fancy I'm gonna put inlay on this box you can put inlay wherever you want. You can go around the top, go around the bottom, in the middle. I'm going to try to get in the middle, but the good thing is, as long as you keep your fence in the same spot, if you're a little bit on one side or the other of the middle, it looks intentional no matter what. So I'm going to cut just an eighth inch groove along the sides of this box. lighter bit of oak will contrast nicely down in that eighth inch slot. Might need a little bit of gentle coercion from your mallet. Beautiful.
Just fill it up with some sand. And some sand from a craft store or like Walmart is pretty inexpensive. So here's my Zen garden. It is complete and ready to go and it was a lot of fun to make and it was really fun to try experimenting with some exotic wood that I've never used before and it wasn't that bad to work with. If you like this project and this video you should know that I have brand new woodworking project videos every single Friday and every single Wednesday I have a follow-up on those projects with my brother-in-law Adam and those are pretty funny so if you don't watch them shame on you. Subscribe to this channel too so you don't miss any of those videos and click the notification bell too so you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. If you like this video then that helps with the YouTube algorithm so only, only we know that. So, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.